What's up, dude? This conversation is really fun, uh, really helping an entrepreneur understand who their customer was, specifically around putting together a webinar to help them not only add a ton of value, but also do it through a promotion through a partner, and then making sure that they kind of transition from adding the value to delivering uh, a product that's really gonna meet their needs and get a lot of value from that. So uh, really fun conversation, talked about the why, talked about the team, talked about the conflict on product roadmap, getting customer feedback, all that to just really make sure that they um, they leverage and use role playing, so key in your business, uh, so that you don't go into a meeting cold and you don't have the intention set. So I think uh, you guys are gonna really enjoy this one. Uh, what a day, man. Good to be here. I love the rain. Yeah. All right, dude, I'm here for you. Um, what are we gonna, like, what, what would make this conversation just incredible for you? Uh, I want to go into this webinar that's supposed to be scheduled feeling like I know exactly what I need to do to execute at the highest possible level. Cool. So, so unpack what you've got going on so I can get context. Just kind of, you know, every time I talk to an entrepreneur, things reset. So, so Parakeeto. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the company and the webinar and kind of what, what would 10 out of 10 look like for you? Absolutely. So uh, Parakeeto is a project that recently started doing customer development on to try and validate that there was a real need for it. Essentially. Mm -hmm we saw that there was an issue with creative marketing development agencies that the founders are so inundated with work, especially when the agency is kind of small under 30 employees that they don't really track the numbers or the metrics that they need in order to yeah, work on Yeah, they don't, the they don't have any dashboarding, financial projections, all that stuff. That's cool, it. so agencies that have issues, so what, what, so we'll get to the webinar, but mm. what would be true in their business that would make them feel like they need this solution? What's going on? Essentially, the founders are just tired of being inundated with work, being in the business. Um, if you really want to get granular, a lot of them that I speak to have kids, family. Yeah, because I mean, like the fa like the, the inundated, la, 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 like that's every business. Yeah. But what, what, like to me, there's usually something like, have you ever, have you ever had a really shitty day? Mm. Have you ever like had a moment where you're like, enough's enough? Yeah. What happened? They lost a shitload no, of money. No, no, you. What happened? Oh, for me. Yeah, like what what happened in that <laughs> moment where a thing was like it doesn't have to be like don't we don't need to get like super personal, but like if you can remember a moment where you're just like enough's enough, what happened in that moment? Yeah, I lost a bunch of clients. Perfect. Yeah. So that like that's that pain is what you need to connect with when you think about creating content, when you think about marketing because that's the message that your customer is going to go, this is a now thing. You know, at the end of yep. the day, certain, you know, you could say like, my customer is a million to five million a year agency in the creative space, blah, blah, blah. Those are all great things. But something needs to be true about the shit that they just ate, right? That makes it a now thing. And I think that getting clear of like, their accountant just called them and told them like, by the way, you're not gonna be able to make payroll. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, three of their top, like two of the top three clients that make up 80% of the revenue just quit them in the last, you know, uh, four days. Like something bad happened that they are now saying enough's enough. I need, I need an answer to this. Right. So to me, you know, I think it's really important to, to make a list of those five things and, and, and always have them front of mind anytime you do anything. Mm -hmm. So what are those five moments that just happened to this entrepreneur that I can serve them and, and really help them? So that, that's, that's a big thing. So you, you sound like you're clear on who the customer is. Yeah. Um, how are you going to fill the webinar? So uh, we're going to do an affiliate webinar with a uh, gentleman. Cool. I just have, a, I have a, nothing wrong with affiliates. I have a problem with the word affiliate. So I like calling them promotional partners. Cool. Because I like the word partner. I think words matter. You agree words matter? Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay, affiliate just feels too transactional. I don't want affiliates. I want partners. I want people that are going to invest the time to build something together that's going to really serve the community. So just, and I know sometimes they call them even worse than affiliates. Personally, and I feel bad because I have friends in the space that actually like have programs called this, is JV. Like, you know what I mean? Like even JV, it's like, it's just, they can't even say it joint venture it's like just call it a partnership anyways this little side tangent um cool so you've got a promotional partner with somebody and what's the uh, what's the arrangement like what are they going to drive so we've got a call uh on wednesday to actually figure out what's what, what's the arrangement cool. um and so that's my job is to close the webinar on that call what and do say you want? this is the cut so 
what I want is for him to bring his list to the webinar. He's sold to a, a ton of agencies that fit mm -hmm. ex exactly who we are and they've already bought from him and gotten value from him. Um, so I want him to bring them on the webinar and then essentially give us an opportunity to add some value, present an offer, give them a cut. And so we're really just what trying do you to figure want? out. What do you want the split to be? Um, pretty standard, I think, is about 30 to 40 percent is what I'm seeing as a, is that, I mean, that's something you could advise me on, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends, right? What's the price point? What are you going to sell the product at? You know, a thousand bucks for a year. Yeah, so usually at a thousand dollar price point, they're going to want at least, because you got to think is like typically they're promoting stuff to their audience that is probably in the 2000 level and mm. they're going to get 50 percent, so they're going to do a thousand. So if they're going to spend the same amount of energy promoting a partner, they want similar economics. So you may even have to go 60-40 yeah. just to get their interest because otherwise they can just go to their other partners and say, hey, I want to do another one of those, which is something that, you know, it, it, it's always, at the end of the day, it's, you know, people always kind of quantify things uh, based on kind of like revenue by, act, like revenue per activity. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what's the kind of potential outcome the other thing is partners typically want to know that you've done this before. So you're going to have to that up, uphill battle if you've never done it before, right? Mm -hmm. You're essentially going to be the first webinar you do to sell this product is going to be with him. Pretty much, yeah. If he's a sophisticated marketer, he's going to bring that up. You need to bring that up yourself and have a really great answer for that. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he's only got one shot. At the end of the day, he's got an audience. Yes, he wants to serve them. Yes, he wants to you know, add a ton of value and stuff, but it's still a promotional schedule. Like mm -hmm. I have a, a, a promotional calendar for the year. I have so many promotional spots to do things to serve my community. And I can't have those things not perform because those are part of the business model. Um, so it may be 50-50, it may be 60-40 just because of the thousand dollar price point. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else can I help with? So um, the actual webinar structure and the offer why structure. Why are you building this business? Why am I building this yeah. business? Why are you, why is Marcel building this business? It's <laughs> a good question. It is a good question. Um, I think I've been attracted to building a tech business because of how hard it is. Mm -hmm. Like I've learned so much in the last three years that the opportunity to push myself like to a whole nother level I heard level going to the crazy. Olympics is really hard too. Yeah. So why? Oh man, there's something about it. Like, I want to build a team. I want to build a great workplace. I think that's what but gets me most excited. But why this business? This particular business. The people around it, like a co-founder, is great. It's the first time I've had a technical co-founder that like I it's really game get changer. along with. Game yeah. changer. So that's huge. I mean, being in it with people that I'm like, yeah, I could spend the next few years, like 10, 20 years, like going to work with this person. Yeah is that's big. There's a lot to be said for building a product as a byproduct of finding a great team, mm. right? And a great problem too. Like, I think it's a fantastic problem. I mean, the more time I spend speaking to the entrepreneur that we're serving, like the more I care they're, about They're like, they're the ones that either they figure this out and they either do it themselves or they use a product like your, yours. Like mm. they don't have a tool, that's why you're building it. And they're the ones that end up building the five, 10 million, 20 million a year agency, yeah. or they don't. They go to two, Two really sucks because they're working twice as much, making half the profit, and then they go back to one. Like there's this shitty spot at two million a year for agencies that uh, most of them don't make the leap, right? Because uh -huh. it really is about paying above market salary for talent to build out the business. Um, yeah, you make less money. It is a lot of work because it's a bunch of people. It's it's kind of like you're finally starting to delegate like it's just and, and you and if you have no optics then where's the light at the end of the tunnel right yeah 100 percent. um that's interesting it's funny you say that too because the agencies that i run into that have passed the two million mark are like growing so crazy fast that they're only if there they can blip. crack it yeah they can crack it um so that's cool so there's a passion for the customer um what what else can i help with specifically um, so when it comes to, and I know you have a, a framework on this, like building a webinar that converts really, really well. Um, I tried to find that video last night. I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. Um, but that's something that, you know, I've actually got two big webinars, one for my, my personal coaching business that I have to do next week. Mm -hmm. And then also this one. So that would be a huge, yeah, help. I mean, I'll, I, I'll get you the link, but 
The problem with all these internet markers is they're, 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 they're diluting the power by making it seem schemey. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like kind of like email marketing. It's like, you know, I think it's Gary or somebody says like markers ruin everything. And it's true. So it's like you've got, you get this powerful thing called webinars. And the reason it's powerful because you have the opportunity to add a ton of value for a lot of people at once in a very engaging format. I love, personally, I love webinars for teaching and training and for, you know, presenting opportunities for people to, um, to buy products. The, the mistake that people make is they don't add any value. So like to me, there's a correlation between how much value and results I can give somebody. And even if they can't get them on the webinar because they're on the webinar, right? Mm -hmm. But the perception of them going, oh my gosh, this isn't like a tell me what I don't know and then sell me the thing that actually gets me the result. It's giving them the thing that gets them the result and them going, wow, if this is free, then they've got this tool that's gonna allow me to do it. Cause it really that to me for software, I'm, I'm just, I'm a software mm -hmm. guy, right? Um, the way I think about it, and this is how some of the best companies have done it, is they, they you teach the thing your product does um, automated or, or assist. So that whatever, where you make it, where a lot of people make the mistake is they teach something that's not really the software. It's the thing you need to do before you get to the software. So I was just talking with an entrepreneur and they have um, some software for like marketing and then they were gonna teach Facebook because their tool kind of helps post Facebook traffic. And I'm like, well, it's not a bad idea. Like, of course you're gonna help the person, mm. but what you miss out on is really illuminating the challenge and the pain of doing this thing that they should do and then bridging that um, uh, from just, you know, just teaching them to like, hey, I can actually help you get this result faster. Mm. I think, so whatever you teach should be what your software does for like essentially in a, a more efficient way. Yeah. Does that make sense? 100%. Cool, so do you already have the content figured out? Um, yeah, I think what we're going to do is take a spreadsheet template that we've developed yeah. and essentially teach people like these are the, these are the metrics, this is how you track them in your agency, here's some processes that you can have in place and here's, huh. yeah. But, uh, so it'd be it's like not very brief sexy, story. Man. Yeah. It's not very sexy at all. Um, so I like focusing more on outcomes, I guess would be 100%. a way to make it sexier. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think people like, yeah, spreadsheets, quant numbers, blah, blah, blah. They want to know that, but you can give them a spreadsheet, they can get to that. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's more, what are the three numbers every agency needs to know? Like, I, if I had an agency, I don't know what my three numbers are, right? And like, if you can give me a really quick way of, of like, that would be amazing. So like, maybe the three numbers, how to, how to best manage my, my team, because I think your software does that, like kind of gives people concepts of utilization and, mm, Yeah, right? forecasting. Be, yeah, forecasting. So I think, I think it's the three numbers and one is, kind of like pipeline, the other one is actual, and the third one is projections, yeah. right? And, and if you can teach that in a really great story format, because it is kind of dry, it's a numbers mm -hmm. thing, um, I think that would be really interesting. And then also, every benefit slash feature should have a testimonial from the customer that got the benefit of that feature. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think if you use that same pattern on the webinar, which I don't teach, but it's something uh, I'm definitely, you know, it's not in the core framework, but it's something I'm guiding uh, folks in today is whenever you teach a concept, do a micro case study on somebody that got the result doing that thing or avoided a pain doing that thing. So if you're like, hey, it's really important to understand pipeline so you don't end up with a team that's bloated and not enough enough pipe like uh, uh, deals to fund the utilization and then you have December, January, which are typically slow months, totally crush you. Here's a client that we showed this. And even if it's not the software, because a lot of people are like, but Dan, you tell us to sell the software before you build it. Yes. You can still find people that have, have used that strategy to mm. avoid a pain that you can tell their story. Because mm. it's not about the software at that point. You're just telling the story about this thing that's really important. So you could just post on, face, on Facebook and be like, hey, has anybody run an agency and do pipeline analysis to help them avoid low months? And they go, yeah, I do that. Cool. Can I talk about your story on a webinar? And they're like, yeah, I don't care. And then you just interview them. You put it in the webinar and you say, hey, I was talking to John. He's got this agency. Here's how he uses this strategy to avoid this pain, right? Yeah. So then it's like, oh, it's, it's like something that like successful agencies are. You know, when people look at marketing, I think they ask themselves this question of who are people like me that you've served? Mm -hmm. Right. So if you think about the audience that, that your partner is going to bring to that webinar, um, being able to answer that, I think is going to be really important. Um, and then show case studies of people 
that you've talked to that are like those people on the webinar and, and say like, oh, it's, it's served me, right? Smart. It's an idea, it just, it makes sense in my head to like, I'm always thinking about people that don't have the assets. It's like you start a business, you have to bring certain level of marketing yeah, to the business. How do you, it's not being dishonest or faking it. It's, it's essentially saying, well, it, I need to get this, but I don't have it. It's kind of like sometimes people, they start service businesses and they, they give away 10 you know, services for free. And then on the back end, if they do a good job, they ask for a customer testimonial. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no, um, it's not just like they didn't, they still delivered the service. They just may not have got paid for it, but they still have the people saying nice things about them based on the service they got. Yeah. Right. So I like that. It's, it's, it's a way to prime the pump. Uh, and, and my co-founder, his story is, is like, is one we can use repeatedly because it's, that's exactly Those the are the story, best right? products to build, like yeah. building a product for yourself and you tell your story. He's living proof of like, this is, we implemented this. I would so. save that one for the offer. Hmm. So essentially you teach, teach, teach. And at the end of each one, you say, here's somebody that used this to get this result or avoid this pain. Teach, teach, teach. Then you go to the turn, which is like, hey, would you guys like me to teach you a way or, or show you software that allows you to get all this for free, right? Essentially with no effort. They're like, oh yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Great, cool. Here's what we, here's the problem. Here's this new problem, right? That, hey, you can do all this, but now you got to pay you know, an account and you got to do all the stuff mm. and, and there really should be an easier way. And I think it looks like this, you integrate this, but da, 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 da. and then in there, you want to do a case study of somebody that used the software ideally, mm. or work you worked with as a service person, um, to get them an outcome, right? That your software allows them to get. That's where I would save that for in that section. Love it. Hands getting sore. Yeah, man, you just you gotta. It's it's funny how like when you don't write a lot and you start writing, it like cramps. It's like you're like you haven't built that cramp muscle. Like <laughs> it's like being in school. Yeah. Cool. Flash Anything else? Back. Um. So this uh, the last one is kind of around. I remember when we were in San Francisco, and John said something about. He said, I think I remember his exact words. He said, the CEO's job is to fight for the customer. Mm, the voice of the customer. That's right. Yeah. Um. And so. I've got a co-founder that's super passionate about this pro project, super passionate about the problem and solving it, um, and also super passionate about the way that he believes it should be solved. And so, um, you know, one of the ongoing things is managing that, like, you know, how we see a challenge and we come at it from two different angles and yeah, just managing that, that friction. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the challenge, the, the, here's the thing is, um, the, pr the problem with teams that this comes up, it's usually because they've, that one team member has experience of working on a team where, and, th and this is very normal where somebody's like, the customer's saying this, but there's no proof, hmm. right? And it's, it's tough because like, you're making drastically major product decisions based on like a conversation that may not be real, mm -hmm. right? Because like people have the observer bias or, you know what I mean? Like they, I'm sure CEOs make up shit in their head and they're like, yeah, well, everybody's saying this. It's like, who's everybody? Yeah. And please point me to one email because I have a hard time believing this. Like, I, I, I have to ask this sometimes when people say this to me. Um, so I think that documenting the customer discovery process is a really important one. Now, the, the flip side of that is, so if you have that, then there's like, the customer's telling you what their problem is, but they don't get to decide how you solve it. Yeah. And that's where you guys might actually be on the same page is like, we agree that this is a problem. It's just the way I want to solve it or you want to solve it. They're different. Mm -hmm. And that to me, I always design it and bring it back to the customer. So that's, it's not my opinion. I have an opinion on strategy and sequence and like say, well, we're going to do this first. But as soon as I wireframe that, I bring it back to the customer and say, would this have solved your problem? Yeah. And if they go, no, you totally misunderstood what I was saying. It's like, great. I didn't write any code. I just wireframed it. I, th that, that feedback cycle is so much shorter and quicker than actually doing fully deployed code. So like the whole idea of building a clickable prototype, which is, is part of my framework, the customer creation model, uh, it's not just for pre-selling, right? It's actually for product development. I think yeah. a lot of people miss that, that uh, building your user stories in clickable prototypes as core functionality that can be deployed as units, right? Of like, here's a new feature for reporting, here's a new feature for adding a new member, that that's designed in a clickable prototype and ideally co-created with a customer. That's product development. That's not just a, 
let's build the first MVP as a clickable prototype and pre-sell it. It's let's build the muscle of a business to actually prototype, get customer feedback, and that's just our DNA of how we do things. Because, man, I can't tell you how many times people actually do the right things in the beginning and then stop doing the thing that made them successful only to realize two years later they built this bloated piece of shit software mm. and now they're trying to figure out where they went wrong. It's like, well, you kept building stuff without talking to the customer, yet you did it at first. Like, they actually did customer discovery, they built the roadmap, they did all these things in the beginning, and then they stopped doing it because they got kind of like cocky of like their mm. ability to predict what the customer wanted. But truthfully, they didn't have that, they just had discipline in the beginning that they got rid of, yeah. right? Like, I, I see that happen all the time, where, they raise funding, they whatever it is, and then all of a sudden it's like all that stuff you used to do, you stop doing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So there's gonna be challenges around what you're hearing from the customer and what your co-founder thinks they're saying, and you're kind of playing game of telephone, but nothing um, would stop you from suggesting, hey, let's wireframe this and I'll bring it back to the customer and you can video like I actually record those sessions mm. and then save those. Like you can do a Skype screen share, you can do a Zoom screen share and default records and you could actually have a folder with all the customer interviews and just rename them because Zoom definitely doesn't put anything descriptive as a name. Mm. Skype does a little bit better with the recording software um, and then make that available to your co-founder to review if he feels like he wants to really understand what was the feedback, yeah. right? And that's just fair, like words matter. Your interpretation of what they said when you showed it to them versus the way he might look at it and say, oh, well they actually said this but they, they really meant this. Let's retweak the prototype and go present this new thing. That would get you there faster. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, for sure. Cool. So. Here's what I'm hearing. You've got a big partner webinar. You're going in cold, which you're gonna to have to overcome. Here's the biggest thing anytime you do any negotiation is you need to be 100% clear what you want it to look like. So one of the things that I do, and you notice I ask you, I sit down, is what, what's gonna make this awesome for you, okay? So you need to be clear of what that relationship should be before you get on the call with him so that you know what you want it to look like so you can come with the confidence and he might have kind of, he might be wishy-washy about it and that's okay because you're gonna come with like, here's what I'm, I'm willing to do. I'm cool doing 60, I'm cool doing 50. You know, cause like you want, you want to come across with the confidence as if like this is what's gonna go on. And then when he asks you, well, how many of these have you done in the past? You go, well, this will be my first, but here's why it'll be awesome, mm -hmm. right? Have that answer ready, right? I'm a big fan of role playing, especially with your co-founder or a friend, like have the list of questions you know they're gonna ask role play with somebody else, have them ask you and just iterate it almost so it comes like second nature and it's a muscle. These, I mean, what's funny is like, how many people could this person give you access to? Like? At least 50,000, 50,000 emails? Uh, like agency specific, I think he's, he's got like a little over 2,000 that have like purchased from him. Yeah, so 2,000 paying customers, mm. agency customers. So they've already thrown down, they probably would throw down. Like super qualified, targeted, et cetera. Like these are the kind of opportunities that entrepreneurs get that can change the trajectory of their business. And I find it irresponsible and crazy that people don't role play those conversations prior. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that's you, I'm just saying most entrepreneurs that I get the call when I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on? They're like, well, I get this really important meeting and I'm like, okay, well, who are you gonna role play with? They're like, is that, is that something I should do? I'm like, why, yeah, right? I mean, Marcel, you know that there's a difference if we're sitting here and I go like, let's, let's banter, yeah. and at the end of the banter 20 minutes, your answers are gonna be rock solid versus not doing that, right? Yeah, for sure. That's the power. Um, and then, uh, so that's the big thing. Make sure that, again, words matter, promotion, and, um, and then really it's about the offer, man. Just create something incredible. Create something so great you're like, I want this. Mm. Like I, I feel like that's always been my gift is I always present things that are just, I think of the customer and I say, okay, you know, and I talk about add-ons in the training I'll send you, but um, you know, what are the, another way I think about it is supplements. You know, like if I go to the gym, I need to buy supplements. If I buy this software, there's probably other things that are gonna hold me up. How can you help them overcome those mm. things that are gonna hold them up? What are the supplements that you can put together for them that makes the whole package just incredible? value, right? And usually it's 10 to one, ideally, right? If you sell it for a thousand, you wanna show or demonstrate or them feel like, man, this is really worth 10 grand. 
Oh, that's easy to do. Yeah. So it's like, uh, what are the other gaps in the thing that you offer that they're going to they're gonna be roadblocked on that you can bring? This sometimes is software. This is other training. This is being handheld. This is a review of their implementation. This is, um, yeah, other software that you guys might offer, or other software that they're going to need um, down the either before or after using your product that you can get a discount for them because you're going to negotiate like kind of a, a bulk or a partnership agreement with these other products. Like that's, that's the power is putting the time and energy to build out those value adds, those add-ons so that the offer just seems like I feel so lucky I'm actually on this webinar. That's, that's, a, that's the way I think about it is I want to make it so good. I want everybody that stuck around till the end and see this to feel really excited that they invested that time and energy. All right, man, go crush it. So I came to get some more clarity on how to prepare for a meeting that could probably change my entire life and the trajectory of my entire business. A lot of confidence was what I was looking for coming in here and just, you know, very clear action steps on how to move forward to make sure that I'm, I'm going into this as prepared as I can. And I got exactly what I was looking for. Um, and just super validating to sit down in front of somebody that's done this several times um, and to know that, you know, you're doing the right things going in the right direction and there are some things that you can do specifically to make sure you show up the way you need to. So that was incredible. Uh, always valuable spending time with Dan Martel.